Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Tia Haslam, and thank you for joining us in our webinar today. I would like to welcome you to our Never Stop Learning webinar series on Unified Interface Readiness Summer 2020 updates. This is a live session brought to you by CRM Dynamics, one of the largest Microsoft Gold Partner in Canada, 2019 Microsoft Impact Award, and a member of Microsoft Global Inner Circle Partners for Business Applications in 2019 and 2020. Now, before we begin our webcast, I would like to take you through some guidelines. To ensure that everyone can listen to the presentation, we have muted all the lines. If you'd like to ask questions, please use the chat or question function on your control panel, and we will address them at the end of the presentation. In today's webinar, you will learn and understand the impact from the new unified interface update. The enhancement is designed to allow you access on the latest technology from Microsoft with the new value benefits from your existing 365 experience. We are very excited to have Angelina Jacobs, our senior consultant, Microsoft certified professional presenting for us today. I hope you enjoy our webinar, and now I would like to invite Angelina to begin her presentation. Thanks, Tia. Just Thanks, confirm Angie. you can hear me okay? I can, thank you. Excellent. Well, welcome everyone. It's been a few months, I think, since I've talked about Unified Interface, but since Microsoft has given all of us in the cloud a hard deadline, I'm back at it uh, to help you prepare for the transition. So as introduced, uh, I will be your presenter today, and my name is Angelina Jacobs. I am one of the consultants at CRM Dynamics, and lately I have been uh, more heavily involved in Unified Interface Readiness Assessments. So feel free, send me any questions uh, by email, feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Um, I do try to do my best to answer what I can, or you know, just sending you the right resources, documents, so that you can continue on your own. If you connect on LinkedIn, as well as uh, following Serum Dynamics, you'll get uh, to see those posts for upcoming webinars and any cool features that are coming. So for today, I will talk a little bit about what Unified Interface is, what to be aware of in terms of new features and enhancements, as well as some of the items being deprecated. Um, and then uh, I will show how you can start preparing for the transition along with how we at Serum Dynamics can help you with that. So what is Unified Interface? It's also called Unified Client Interface, or you'll see UCI or just UI, just in case you see that reference, those references as well. And I wish I could say it's the new user experience and interface, but to be honest, it's actually kind of old news now. I think we're coming on two years or so, but for those of you who've had Serum longer, I understand it is new for you, so I welcome you to the new UI. It uses responsive web design principles so that regardless of what device you're on, the screen size or orientation like landscape or portrait, you have a much better viewing and interaction experience with your Serum and any related apps. So you'll see here just a few samples um, between, you know, if you're on a web browser on your desktop, using a tablet app, your phone, as well as the Outlook app. Now, there are a lot of new features, of course, and enhancements available, and they're only available in the Unified Interface. I had demoed some of these previously, so if you are looking to see these in play, I highly recommend uh, take a look at our YouTube channel and past webinars where I kind of demo that and dig a bit deeper into these features. It's important to note that all new features and updates that Microsoft has coming out will only be for Unified Interface. So, of course, it only makes sense that they're finally pushing customers to transition. Some of the key changes to highlight include navigation changes. So we'll see a little bit of that um, when I jump into an environment. Uh, business process enhancements, so it looks a bit different, acts a bit different. Uh, there's introduction of reference panels, which I do quite like. Uh, reflow, so that responsive display to your screen size that I was talking about earlier. Uh, there's timeline control, there's custom, custom controls as well, so like star ratings for whole numbers or a flip switch for two option sets like your yes and no's um, or a slider for other numeric fields, so that's what that refers to. Sorry, it looks like my slide is stuck. There we go. <laughs> okay, so just a couple of things that are being deprecated. Well, it's been a long time coming, but you can say goodbye to those dialogues. 
um, and task flows. So those can be replaced though with business process flows, embedded Power Apps, or Power Automate, which was formerly known as Microsoft Flow. Uh, service scheduling uh, in the customer service app is being deprecated, but it's being replaced by what's now called universal resource scheduling. So that's something else you can check out. And then the Dynamics 365 Outlook Com add-in is finally being deprecated, which, I mean, comes as no surprise because we have seen that lightweight D365 app for Outlook come up in the past um, couple of years. So that'll be the main Outlook uh, integration, if you will. Okay, let's get into the planning discussion. So you can get started on your preparations, assuming you haven't already. Um, October 2020, so that is the date uh, to remember to have your transition ready by. It's basically the cutoff date and your environments will be transitioned whether you, you like it or not. So for those of you who are system administrators, you may have already received communications from Microsoft about this. What they're essentially trying to do is schedule customers and specific environments for early transition. You do have to explicitly approve, I think. So, you know, even if you get that email and you haven't approved it, it's not going to happen. They'll just schedule another one and you'll get another email with the next date. Um, you can also, though, postpone it by filing an exception request. So don't worry too, too much. Just something to beware. Uh, in those communications, it will reference a uh, portal for you to sign into. So if you are a system administrator, um, Dynamics 365 ad, or D35 service admin role or office admin role, um, you can sign into that and that's where you can schedule or postpone your uh, transition. This is obviously assuming that you haven't already manually done it yourself and we will get into that. Now to get started with your transition, there are a couple ways you can go about testing. So obviously we do recommend you start with a sandbox environment if you don't already have one. Um, so if that's something new for you, you can easily create a sandbox environment as a copy of your production, and that's the best way to get started. So one of them is going to be enabling the use of unified interface only with an existing environment. So this will use interface, the, sorry, this will use unified interface for all model-driven apps in the environment, even if they were configured initially for the legacy web client. The second uh, way you can go about this is you um, use an environment to create a unified interface app based on the current configuration or default solution of the environment. So this allows you to actually run the legacy web client that you're used to and a unified interface app in parallel. So you can actually have both up for a side-by-side -side view. That one, I mean, any changes you also make to the uh, default solution will affect both legacy and uh, the Unified inter Interface app, but this way you can actually see how the two compare, you know, if you're looking at forms, views, um, testing, uh, any custom functionality you've added into there. Okay, so I'm actually gonna jump into uh, one of the test environments here. And for those of you that are um, still on the legacy web client, you might, not have seen these new Power Platform and Power Apps admin centers, so they will be a bit new to you as well, just in terms of where you do your customizations, where you manage your environments, and the settings within. Um, so this is certainly something to get familiar with. One is the admin Power Platform, as well as the Power Apps Maker here. So I will show you both of these, but basically this is kind of your um, area where you'd manage your environments. So if you have a production environment, if you have a sandbox or multiple sandbox environments, they'd be listed here. So the simplest way you can go about um, enabling unified interface is actually just enabling it within the environment setting. So I'm gonna open up my Contoso environment here. You'll notice I just have some environment URL. Um, my type rate for this one is production. This is just a demo environment though, so you would hopefully see sandbox here for yourselves. Um, this is also where you can enable um, all the release waves that are coming up. So we went through this last year where you can enable the 2019 wave two, but now 2020 release wave one is coming. So you can actually enable those so they will um, come into your environment. Certainly suggest doing that for your sandbox ones too, so you can check those out. So from here, I'm actually gonna open up my settings. And some of these will look familiar just based on the um, legacy settings area. So just going over to my legacy CRM environment, 
those of you familiar with this navigation, you know, in your settings, and then your administration. Okay. But I'm using the uh, new Power Platform Admin Center for this. So I want to drop down my product and click behavior. So if you want to take an environment and then just um, have unified interface as the only option, it's very easily done. You would just flip the switch here that says use unified interface only and then save. So I can save this and then if I go back to my um, environment, let's see if it refreshed because it should happen pretty quickly. There you go. Because I have unified interface enabled and I've gone to my default URL, so usually you have your company name at crm.dynamics.com. I have multiple apps already available to me. That is why I get to a home page and I can pick which app uh, to go into. Let's say you have someone, a user that uh, their security role only gives them access to one app. If they go to their normal URL, like the company name .crm it will automatically go into that one app, like Sales Hub, let's say. But if that person does have access to more than one app, they'll meet this home screen just like I did, and then they can pick which app to go into. Now, you can turn that off again if you want to go back to the legacy client. So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm just going to revert the change I just did, because then I'll show you the other way that you can um, start test testing out your legacy web client in a unified interface application. So I'm going to go back into my behavior settings. You have to turn this off for this second way that I'm going to show you. Click Save, and now I'm back into my um, legacy web client. Okay, so from here, it should pop back in pretty quickly as soon as I flip that switch. And now it opened in two uh, tabs. I'm just going to exit one of these. Okay, so if you want to run both in parallel for your testing to prepare for the transition, what you're going to do is, again, make sure that the um, use unified interface switch is off. And then you're going to go and create a custom solution and we're going to create a unified interface app within that. So for those of you that are used to the legacy web client, you know, you go to settings and you go to solutions and you create your solutions here. I highly recommend you become familiar with the Power Apps Maker Portal instead because that is going to be uh, where everyone gets to in the near future. And you can get there by just going make.powerapps.com and signing in, and if you have the proper um, security, you'll be able to do this here. So, I'm gonna go into solutions. And before I continue on, some of you on the line may have already um, been brought to this similar screen because there was a little time not too long ago where I think it might've been a week or two, where um, going to the advanced settings of your legacy system actually brought you into here but then Microsoft reverted that so that you could still get to it, um, get to the legacy settings area. But for those of you that maybe have never seen this, certainly become aware of it, make.powerapps.com. And it's pretty uh, self-explanatory just in terms of navigation here on the left. So I'm in my solutions. I'm gonna create a new solution and I can just call this unified interface. If you do have certain change management and publisher, um, rules you have to follow, be sure to pick them correctly. I'm just going to use the default publisher here, version, and you know if this is the first one, of course it's going to be 1.0, and I'm going to create. So that's the first step. Now just something else to point out, and this isn't necessarily on the Unified Interface topic, but more this Power Apps uh, Maker Portal. When you're in here, if you do have multiple environments, do make sure that you're in the right environment. So if you have multiple and you click this down, you could have uh, multiple here. So if you had production, sandbox, sandbox two, three, four, you would just have to make sure you're uh, creating the solution in the correct one. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my unified interface solution I just created. I'm gonna create new, and I'm creating an app and a model-driven app. This is gonna pop open an app designer screen. I'm gonna give this app a name. So I'm gonna, let's just call it Unified Interface 
testing. You'll notice it gives a unique name, and depending on the publisher you chose, you'd have a different uh, prefix here. And you give a little description like test app for UI. You can change the icon if you want to get a little bit fancier. <laughs> and then down here, you're going to select use existing solution to create the app. What this allows you to do is select the default solution of the current environment you've chose, as well as the site map that already exists with it. I'm going to go next, and here's where I'm going to select the solution. So you want to select default, and then for sitemap, you want to select sitemap. I'm going to go done. This should open up my um, app designer and sitemap editor. Here we go. So this is your new app designer. It allows you also to edit the sitemap if you were creating a brand new app. I'm going to leave it as is because what the system has done is it's taken my default solution for the environment and created this for me. I'm going to publish this so it actually becomes an active application for me. And I can jump right into it by going play. And if it's just system administrators that are doing this, very easy then you can go in, start playing around, seeing the difference between your unified interface and your web or your legacy web client. But if you also want to share this with maybe another set of users, if you have, you know, some that are involved in uh, testing of this, if you have some UAT or QA uh, teams, you also have to make sure that their security role has access to this app. So I could just go play it launches the app for me, and then I can have both my unified interface environment here, once that loads, and I can also switch back to my legacy web client here. So you can actually run both of these side by side, you know, if you had two different monitors, or just split the screen uh, to see the difference, you know, see what work is maybe required, especially for form optimization, business process flow changes, etc. Okay. Now, I did mention, though, that you, if you are to share this with other users that are not system administrators, you do have to make sure that their security role has access to this. There are a couple ways that you can go about doing this. Um, one is, if you are in the legacy web client, you can just append apps to your URL. So I actually could just go dot apps, or sorry, slash apps. <laughs> And then that brings me to this familiar home page that we saw um, not too long ago. And you can pick the app. You'll notice down here, here's my unified interface testing app. So this is one way to get to this. And then from here, I want to click this ellipses and go manage roles. So that's just one quick way is if you append apps to your um, company CRM URL up here. The other way, though, let's see if I can go back. That's just pending emails from my system. So the other way you can go about this if you are in the legacy web client is you go into your settings. And some of you may already be familiar with this, but you usually have a My Apps area in here. And I'm now at the same screen. So two different ways to get to the same place. Okay, so here's my unified interface testing app. I'm gonna click on the three ellipses and I'm gonna go manage roles. There's a couple things you can do in here. One, you can give your app a specific URL suffix. So I actually could say UI test. This generates a nice URL that goes directly to this app. So you can actually share this with other users that you want to go in and have test this app. So you can just copy it. And then that way they can bookmark it. Again, now that you've enabled this as an application and once we assign a role or assign their role to have access to it, they would meet this screen as well. So I'm going to expand the roles area here. Scrolling down, just so you can see anything highlighted has access to this application. So by default, system administrators and system customizers. But let's say I actually wanted some of my um, account managers or customer service reps to have access to this. I would just highlight, highlight, and then save. And then that way, any individuals with that security role signed will also have access to this new unified interface app. And they could run through both um, the application and have the legacy web client side by side.
System administrators can also just delete this app, so um, you can remove it just as you would any other application um, or solution. Now, once you have your UI app open, there are some areas that you'd wanna run through. For those of you that maybe have heavy customization, especially if you have plugins running, if you have JavaScript, um, those are certainly key areas um, that require a lot more um, review um, and usually some updates, especially for those who've had CRM for quite a few years. And that is, that is where Sim Dynamics comes in to help. We review those, we assess them, and um, let you know, you know what has to be done so that they still work properly. The other thing though too is we look at what has been in your legacy web client and take a lot of that and see if there's any new features that are more out of the box that could handle um, what was running in your legacy web client. So this is certainly, this transition is an opportunity for your organization to look at their processes, look at um, enabling new features, making use of what uh, Microsoft has now put in available on Unified Interface. Um, so the transition period is more than just switching your application from legacy to Unified Interface. It's that time where you can um, really dig deeper into, you know, if you have too many workflows, if you have to uh, revise any business process flows, and most simply, just change around your forms. So just to give you an example for those who maybe aren't as familiar, with the unified interface, the form layouts have changed. There's a little bit more white space, a little better organization, but one of the key things I do like to point out is the screen real estate. So I'm just in a sample account right now. One of the first things you should notice is the tabs across the top. So this makes it so that for um, a interface design, you want to put as much as you can on the real estate here and not have users scrolling down and down and down and down. Whereas on the legacy web client, if you remember, tabs kept going down the screen. You could navigate to them from up here and switch tabs, or you just have users who kept scrolling down the screen. Now it's a very easy click on tabs just at the top. You notice it looks a bit different too, just in terms of icons, how the timeline is uh, laid out. So I did talk about better timeline controls. So you can do a lot more filtering and such, um, drilling down here. And then I also talked about those reference panels. So those are really neat to see. I will jump in just into a lead here, just to quickly show you the business process flow for those who maybe haven't seen the changes. This is great that it takes up less real estate. I'm sure anyone who's worked on the laptop in CRM, sometimes it's quite a pain for how much um, room the business process flow took up. So you can have a quick uh, view of it. You can click it here to open up the stage if you just have to do some quick references, or you can actually pin it to the side and still keep a lot of the uh, form real estate open here to work through, and then also do your work on the side here in the business process flow. So that's very quite nice. Uh, the other key thing too is just the navigation, which um, I guess I could have pointed out initially. Nice and easy navigation on the left here. And it's so much easier to clean up this um, site map basically. So where we were used to in the legacy client of having you know, one site map, one menu drop down uh, that could potentially show a lot of stuff people didn't need. Um, in your applications now, you can have more than one application and you can cater this navigation menu to the users who would be using it. So if I'm someone who's only dealing in leads and opportunities and accounts and contacts, you can create another unified interface app that just has that. And then my menu is nice and clean, makes it real simple, very easy to do my job. The same can be said for customer service. So down here, is where you switch between those um, main menus of sales service, marketing, you know, project service, field service, and so forth. Um, again, this is just because I created an application based on a legacy uh, web client environment, so it had all these, but I could jump to service. Or again, I could have just a specific service app that only as soon as that that role signs in, they get into a service app that only has the key areas they need, keeps it nice and clean and simple for them. 
I've also seen where uh, customers create seasonal applications. So if it's just something that, you know, once a year or twice a year, um, there's certain key tasks that have to be done. Well, they just have a specific application that has that um, those th areas um, of focus included in it. And then that way, when they need to do that specific, you know, annual or biannual task, they can just go right into the app. And it's very similar to how you would navigate previously with this drop down here. You'll notice I have quite a few apps just because of um, what's included in this demo environment. Same could be said for you, depending on your licensing. But just a very easy way to navigate between different apps if you do tend to have um, a role that, you know, plugs into both service and sales, let's say. So that's the high level overview of transition into Unified Interface so that you can get ready, start testing out your forms, your business process flows, and your automations. Um, again, as I mentioned, any custom code you have running on, on any forms, you'll definitely wanna make sure that those still work um, as expected in Unified Interface, because that is one of the areas we do see that requires updates as well as sometimes you can remove um, solutions or other components because there's new features that can handle that within the unified interface. And again, any new features Microsoft has introduced and will be introducing is only gonna be for unified interface. So that's it for me. I do wanna stress that for anyone that is looking for next steps or um, needs the assistance for the transition, Sam Dynamics is here to help. So please drop us a line, send us an email. Um, we are certainly happy to help and we will uh, make sure that that transition goes smoothly for your organization. If I do also wanna stress that it's best to start now if you have not already, because that October 2020 date will be coming quick, especially with all the other um, tasks and um, responsibilities everyone else has in their actual day-to-day -day jobs. So please make sure that this is a priority within your organization if it hasn't been already, because we certainly don't want October to come and Microsoft switches it over and um, it disrupts your business. So thank you once again. I'm gonna turn it over to Tia and we'll look at any of the questions coming in. Great, thank you so much, Angelina. Uh, I have received a number of questions that just come through. Uh, so anyone else who's participating in this webinar, feel free to type your question in our question functions box. As you do that, I wanna let you know that the recorded version from today's webinar will be available in our YouTube channel. So you can subscribe, like our channel at CRM Dynamics CA to learn more about any updates on D365 and other relevant topics. So the first questions that I receive is, um, our web sources code works in the legacy web client, but not in the UI. That is more common with on load events. Any idea what may cause that and how to approach it? Okay, so um, I don't have the specific answer that Microsoft gave, but I do know that web resources and iframes are key areas to look at um, if you are utilizing them uh, within your legacy uh, client. I don't know exactly why they don't work as expected, um, but that is one of the areas that um, would require an assessment just in terms of how to update it. Sometimes it's just updating um, script to the right version. It, it all depends on what was implemented and when. So I don't have a 100% answer for you. I just know that web resources and iframes are, are key areas that uh, we do look at for any assessment. Great, thanks Angelina. Um, the second question I received um, would be, do you know if there are any drawbacks that I need to be aware of with these new updates? Any drawbacks? Um, I think really the only drawback would just be the resistance to change, right? Not everyone likes change. Um, you know, unified interface even for our organization was not necessarily a shock, but it was just something to get used to because it is different. Um, 
I would say at least one particular thing is the administration of it. So I showed you a little bit that Power Apps Maker Portal. It, because everything's moving over to Power Apps, or sorry, the Power Platform, um, and you have Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, um, it's just going to be very different for administrators who are so used to the old, not the old, but the legacy web client ways of doing things. I don't want to call it a drawback, but it's certainly something that's going to take some time getting used to. And Microsoft is working out the kinks as well. So you can still switch between the classic and the new way of um, design, but eventually I'm sure that's going to go away if it doesn't um, in October. Great. Thank you. Uh, the last question I receive, what do I need to do to anticipate and ensure that the new update won't disrupt our current systems? Ah, prepare, prepare, prepare. So you definitely want to make sure you are um, testing this out in a sandbox environment. Um, that way you can work through all the kinks, any updates that need to happen so that when the time comes, if you want to manually do that transition, you are ready to do so um, for your production environment. So it can just be, you know, if you don't have too much um, customized in terms of coding and such, and you just have to, you know, change some forms around, you know, updates and business process flows um, and workflows maybe, um, that should be an easier transition. But for those who have a bit more involved in the system, um, it's you just take the time to test in your sandbox so that you can document what needs to be done, have a solution ready for the changes that are required so that, you know, over a weekend you can switch production and be smooth sailing come Monday morning. Excellent. Thanks. So that would conclude our webcast for today. I wanted to thank you, Angelina, for participating and presenting. Uh, so if you would like to get additional information um, or if you would like to set up a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Angelina, please feel free to contact us at sales at serumdynamics.ca or you can also visit our website and subscribe to our Learning Academy. Thank you again for taking the time to participate and have a Dynamics Day. Thanks, Angelina. Have a super one. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks all.